Hey guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs for phase one of banking exams like RBS, SEBI, and NABARD, as well as other banking exams at the level of probationary officer. So here I have brought to you very interesting current affairs and a new concept has also been introduced in this video. So what is that new concept? If you are curious to know, then you have to watch this video till the end. So I'm not going to reveal what is it, but yes, it's a bonus for you guys. And I'm going to reveal it at the end of this video. So let's begin this video without wasting any time. I hope that you are curious and interested to learn something new. Here. Uh, on this slide, as I usually say, that those who are coming for the first time should subscribe to our channel and hit this bell notification so that you guys can get instant updates about the new uploads that we do on our channel. Also, join this Telegram group if you want to resolve your queries and enjoy the free quizzes. So, here comes our first question. Which state has signed an agreement with Energy Efficiency Services Limited for India's first green energy convergence project in the state? So guys, let's first discuss the answer of this question. Then we will be discussing about this project and then what is the importance of having such a project. Okay, so the right answer of this question is go. Goa has partnered with EESL in order to uh, implement this India's first green energy convergence project. Now guys, what is the convergence project? Convergence projects are those projects under which different kinds of activities of similar nature and different ministries and departments are collaborated or we can say that they are converged in order to achieve the goal of the single project. So we also have a convergence project which is very famous and that is Smart Cities Mission. So under the Smart Cities Road So this is the Smart Cities mission and under this mission, these are the activities that have been merged and their respective ministries have collaborated in order to achieve the single goal of this Smart Cities mission that is to develop or to transform a city into a smart city. So in this manner, the convergence projects work and in case of Goa, this convergence project which is in the field of green energy is going to collaborate different kinds of green energy projects like solar power plants or every kind of activity that is going on in the state in the field of green energy will be collaborated, will be converged under this project in order to achieve the goal of this project. Now what is the goal? The goal is to uh, make Goa self-reliant in terms of electricity production. Guys, you would be amazed to know that Goa does not produce electricity on its own, does not produce a single watt of electricity. It borrows it from the central grid. So that is why it is important for Goa uh, to become self-reliant in terms of energy production and that too in the, uh, in the field of green energy, basically renewable energy. And that is why this project has been launched. Now in the initial phase, a 100 megawatt solar power plant will be developed and Goa has plans to uh, produce 150 megawatt of green energy in the next two to three years. So that is the goal of Goa government and this uh, megawatt solar plant will be developed uh, in the initial phase of this project. I hope that you have understood what I have taught you in this question. So that's all for this question. But my question for you is that you have to tell me the CM and Governor of Goa. So these two facts are really important and you have to tell me in the comment section below. Next question. Which state has been awarded the best state honor in marine category by the National Fisheries Development Board? First of all, these awards have been given by NFDB, so they are in the sector of fisheries. 
so uh, the state which has performed really well in terms of fisheries uh, that state has been awarded here so which state is it the right answer is odisha now guys there were other awardees as well in different categories so let's have a look at the other awardees and this best state category also has sub categories so let's have a look at those sub categories here in this table you can see that this best state award is divided into three sub categories that is best hilly and northeastern state inland state and marine state so we have discussed marine that is odisha in inland states category uttar pradesh and hilly and northeastern state category it is assam now guys assam is in the spotlight here why because assam has won four awards this year so these four awards are in different categories and this table is prepared uh, keeping in view the importance of assam so best hilly and northeastern government organization award has been given to assam apex cooperative fish marketing and processing federation limited hilly and northeastern district nagao district of assam and the farmer award has been given to amar medhi who is a farmer in assam so these are the awards now these awards these winners have been announced but this award is going to be uh, given is going to be awarded on a really very special day so what is that day the day is world fisheries day now when is this world fisheries day observed this is your task to find out and tell me in the comment section below now we have come on to our next question how much indian cities have been selected by the world economic forum as part of its 36 pioneer cities to adopt a new road map as part of the g20 global smart cities alliance so quite a lot of complex things have come in the single sentence so let me clarify or simplify this question for you so the question is asking you that a total number of 36 cities have been selected by world economic forum from 22 countries why have they been selected they have been selected to adopt a road map basically first to prepare a policy and then uh, the policies will be uh, clubbed together in order to make a road map and that road map will be adopted by these cities in the initial phase and then the rest of the cities in the subsequent phases what uh, what will be the purpose of that road map to help the smart cities or to help the cities adopt technology in order to become smart cities so there are two things that we need to remember first that 36 cities from 22 countries have been selected second these cities have been selected by world economic forum and third that these cities have been selected in order to prepare a road map that will be adopted by these cities in order to make themselves technology savvy to become smart cities and this is a part of g20 global smart cities alliance now what is this g20 global smart cities alliance this alliance was set up in 2019 osaka summit of g20 group in and as the name itself is uh, indicating that this is to accelerate the progress of cities uh, cities that are transforming into smart cities so basically this alliance was formed in order to help the cities uh, help the member countries in transforming their cities into smart cities so that's all for this g20 global smart cities alliance and i hope that the question is clear and the purpose is clear to you now that why have these cities been selected now out of these 36 cities four are from india so the right answer is four now which four cities are these 
बैंगलोर हैदराबाद फरीदाबाद एंड इंदौर इंदौर सो दीज आर दी फोर सिटीज फ्रॉम इंडिया दैट हैव बीन सिलेक्टेड एंड दीज सिटीज विल वर्क ऑन देयर टेक्नोलॉजी पॉलिसीज देयर पॉलिसीज ऑन डिजिटल एरा एंड साइबर स्पेस and enhance these policies in order to prepare this road map that will be adopted by other cities as well in the subsequent stages of this initiative i hope that it is clear to you now and now your task is to tell me the facts about world economic forum headquarters members and chief so these are the four facts uh three facts that you have to tell me in the comment section below about world economic forum remember this that this is an important organization and it can be asked in the examination now we have come across a very interesting question so which state has announced to constitute a cow category for the conservation and promotion of cow in the state so guys can you make a guess here that which state is it i hope i know that majority of you have known the answer and have guessed the answer but if you are thinking that uttar pradesh is the right answer then you are wrong the right answer is madhya pradesh madhya pradesh has announced to establish this cow cabinet and remember that it is the first state to have a cow cabinet so that's all for this question but remember that this cow cabinet will also have rural development farmer welfare and other kind panchayat system other kind of activities under this cabinet so that that will be the focus area of this cabinet apart from this there is an anti cow slaughter act 2004 in madhya pradesh already so these are some of the basic information that you should be aware of okay so an interesting question here is who is that person that is doing this who is the cm that has announced to establish this that you have to tell me also the lord why am i asking you governors of different states the reason is that governors have been asked in the examination so you should be aware of the governors as well so do tell me in the comment section below who among the following has partnered with unicef india as its celebrity advocate to raise awareness on violence against children so let me give you a hint so this is the actor who has acted in bala who has acted in shubh mangal sabdhan and shubh mangal zada sabdhan so now you have guessed the answer so it is ayushman khurana so he is the person that has partnered with unicef india as its celebrity uh, advocate and he is going to spread awareness about the violence against children and to end this violence now this has been done on a really very special day and that is world children's day now guys can you tell me that when is this day observed it is observed on november 20 November 14 is India's Children's Day and 20 is World Children's Day that is observed by United Nations. Now, guys, if you remember that yesterday only we discussed about Rajasthan's Child Right Week that started on November 14 and ended on November 20. So, yeah, from this news you can recollect that news as well. I hope that I'm clear now. Okay, so now let's move on to the last question of the day. But don't end this video after this question because, as I told you, that I have surprise. I have a new concept. So wait for that as well. Who is the speaker of U.S. House of Representatives? So we, as we know, that U.S. elections were recently held, and Joe Biden has been appointed as the has been elected as the president. Now, guys, do you know that? he is the pre, he what is the number or uh, ha what is the number of biden's presidency like he is the 40th president of us or he is the 39th or he is the 57th so what is the number that you have to find out and tell me in the comment section below now let's discuss the speaker of this us house of representatives now i hope that you know that what is this us house of representatives and what is the structure of us parliament 
so if you don't know let me tell you that us parliament is also known as congress it has two parts house of representatives lower house and senate is the upper house so the speaker of lower house that is us house of representatives is nancy pelosi so she was uh, the speaker in she has been basically appointed appointed as a speaker of this house of Repre representatives for a second term as well she was the speaker in donald trump's presidency as well so that's all for this question we are uh, we have done all the questions for the day and now it's time for us to discuss this special session or this special slide so here this news bulletin is there so the news that was in that are in the news basically the things that are in the news that are not very relevant from the exam point of view but at the same time you should be aware of such things that are going on in india so i have put those things in this news bulletin slack so let's have a look at this so we have two news here first is this that there is a person named uh, named ratish who has been engraved as dolphin because of his swimming capacity so he has set a world guinness world record by crossing the 10 km stretch across tiruvananthapuram and shora shoranur kana with his hands and legs tied so this is a very basic news you if you don't even remember this news then it will be okay this is i found very interesting and important is it is about mahajan commission so this mahajan commission was set up in 1966 in order to uh, in order to submit its report about the border dispute between maharashtra and karnataka so this border dispute is also known as belgaum border dispute and in order to submit recommendations in order to resolve this uh, dispute this commission was formed who, which is chaired by justice meher chand mahajan so this is very much in the news that is why it is important for you to remember so if you can remember just remember this one line this is, this will do for your examination if a question comes up from this news so mahajan commission formed in 1966 headed by justice meher chand mahajan to resolve the belgaum border dispute which is between maharashtra and karnataka now what is that dispute it has been mentioned in this these two points so the dispute is bet is between the border and village uh, transfer of village from karnataka and maharashtra that is not very important for us to remember that's why i'm not discussing that at all the thing that is important has been mentioned and discussed by me already so here this session ends i hope that you have really liked this session and if you have then do give us a thumbs up and do watch this video Uh, and share this video as well with your friends thank you so much for watching the video